This is an episode of The Chess Mystery Box, a series I created where chess players send each other packages containing their favorite chess entities like games, puzzles, and traps for the other to unbox. I hope you enjoy. That's right, with this new year, I am starting a new series called The Chess Mystery Box. Uh, the point of the series is to just exchange all of the different beauties that exist in chess. And these beauties can come in different forms. They can come in games, they can come in puzzles, traps, and a lot of other things. So I think this package that I'm going to be exchanging with these different chess players, um, hopefully, will just spread around and share all of the different beauties that exist in chess. The first person in this new series is the chess giant. He's another uh, chess content creator. I highly recommend you check out his content and subscribe to him. You can do that by clicking the link in the pinned comment or the first link in the description. You'll also there find um, a video that he made about the package that I sent him. The chess giant chose a game played by Josh Waitskin when he was just 11 years old. And at the time, people definitely con considered him a chess prodigy. Um, and this game here definitely supports that he played in, in a phenomenal style. So let's go ahead and dive in. He has the white pieces. His opponent is Edward Frumkin. Um, and Josh starts with e4, c5, knight f3. We have a typical Sicilian defense here. Um, and black from the start decides to, you know, be a little aggressive when it comes to the center. So bishop to b4, pinning this knight here, um, and, and therefore also threatening this pawn on e4, which is why f3 simply to defend the pawn. And again, black strikes in the center with d5. Here, Josh decides that he also wants to be equally aggressive, and he also wants to fight for the center very nicely, which is why bishop to b5, pinning a knight that, that influences the center quite a bit, um, and after the knight gets unpinned with bishop d7, he takes, leaving this bishop on d7, a horrible piece for white stuck um, between two, two light square pawns. And also, he realized that this knight here no longer can hop back to d7. That's very highly relevant because now e5 is a very strong move. The knight has to come to g8, which is an ugly square for it, stopping black from castling, um, but also, very importantly, the knight will have to waste a lot of time getting to a nice, strong square. Um, and this time, white spends very nicely. First of all, solidifying their position uh, by playing f4 in the center. Um, and also, very importantly, making sure after this very nice knight maneuver to castle their king and get their king very safe, um, as you see in this position. Um, here, white has a very nice lead in development. Their pieces are very active which is why Josh recognizes this and starts to go for the attack. So after knight b6, queen to g4, um, again, wanting to attack this king here that has castled kingside. The knight does find a very nice square on c4, hitting this bishop, um, but Josh doesn't really care because, once again, he has a pretty nice lead in development and very nice pieces he can use to attack. So after bishop f2, followed uh, by rook e1 and bishop to h4, white already has a pretty nice start of an attack. Um, notice here king to h8 was played and it's a very strong move uh, because of course it's stopping uh, bishop to f6 taking advantage of this pin here. So for instance if bishop to a6 well all of a sudden bishop f6 um, and there's no great way once obviously g6 is played there's no great way to stop this very easy checkmate here for white. Uh, which is why in this position once again king h8 was played. Uh, we have a4 now rook to d1 is played. The point is a queen and bishop, um, especially with this pretty safe king here, is not enough material to do a checkmate, which is why you need to get one of your rooks um, to do a rook lift and to do a checkmate. But obviously the rook here on e3 um, doesn't have the luxury of being able to do a rook lift because this knight guards the e3 square, which is why this rook on d1 is trying uh, to orchestrate a rook lift, um, which will come with a deadly attack um, against black. Um, here we have a trade uh, of the knight on c5, um, and afterwards black plays knight to b2. Um, and the point is, I mean, you're just pressuring the, the rook here on d1, and Josh does a very smart move here, completely ignoring the threat here um, and playing rook to e3. Um, and this is just a great way to transition um, a rook into an attack because as you see both of these rooks here are currently on the first rank and they don't have much power when it comes to attacking but by using um, the tempo that black will spend um, when it comes to attacking this rook and then taking the rook 
white has time to orchestrate a rook lift when black doesn't have time to actually defend from this rook lift, um, which means that we end up in a position like this um, where, where white can, of course, send a rook over here. That being said, there's even something better in this position that Josh found. Um, and instead of moving the rook to g3, which, you know, it is a powerful threat, but it's not necessarily as powerful as an in incredible queen sacrifice, queen takes g7 check. After the king takes, there is a forced mate line here, and I encourage you to pause the video and try to find um, the mate line, but uh, I'll show it on the screen right now. It starts with bishop f6 check. Um, if the king moves to g8, of course, rook to g3 is checkmate. If the king moves uh, to h6, then rook to h3, and then uh, the king is forced to g6, um, and, and we'll finish this checkmate in a bit, because what happened is that the king moved immediately to g6. So regardless, we get a position where the king is on g6, um, and the way that you do a checkmate here is with rook to g3 check. The king is forced to h6, and now bishop to g7 check. The king is forced down the h-file, um, rook to g5 check. The king is forced even further down the h-file, and now knight to f3, finishing off the checkmate with a knight move. Um, I, I just find this, this whole uh, combination here, starting with the queen sacrifice, um, but even further than that, starting with just this beautiful buildup of an attack here that Josh managed to do, starting with the queen moving to g4. I just find this whole um, end of the game very beautiful, and, and it's, a, it's certainly a great pick by the chess giant. Let's move on to the puzzle. Here's the puzzle on the screen right now. It is white to move, um, and I definitely encourage you to take as much time as you need to find the solution by pausing the video. And also, once you have it, make sure you guys comment down below what you think the answer is. At this point, I will go ahead and start to break down this puzzle. So we have this position where clearly white has extra material, but the issue is actually getting this pawn to promote uh, to a queen because with an extra bishop, you cannot do a checkmate. So your only hope is to promote this pawn that actually becomes a very tricky task when you look at the fact that there's three pieces stopping this pawn from moving forward. Um, and this kind of all brings you to the just beautiful solution of bishop to g6. Of course, otherwise, for instance, if you move the bishop to c2, this is stalemate here, which is why once you move the bishop to g6, the only legal move is h takes g6. Um, and here again, you play h takes g6, and, and suddenly the pawn that was completely stuck has now been given hope, um, and you have just a beautiful way to uh, promote this pawn. There's absolutely nothing that black can do, and as you see, um, it ends in a beautiful checkmate. Moving on to the trap that the chess giant submitted, we have the elephant trap, which is one of my favorite traps to do. It's a trap that you do against uh, the queen's gambit decline variation with e6. Um, here, almost always, white will continue with knight to c3, continuing to pounce and add pressure onto this d5 square. Um, here you play knight to f6 and bishop uh, to g5, just pinning your knight and stopping it from having any influence in the center. And here is when you lay out the trap. You play knight b to d7. And for many, it will seem immediately like you're just giving away this free pawn on d5. And, and hopefully, white will think the same. Uh, because, of course, you're just cutting off the defense that the queen has on the pawn. But the point is, after white takes um, and you take back, if white takes with the knight, then you actually take back with your own knight, um, ignoring this pin. And this is just one of the coolest things to do in a trap, because often in traps, you lure your opponent into giving you a free queen. It's very rare that you start off the trap by just giving them a queen. Um, but here, that's exactly what you do. But after bishop takes the queen, there's a way that you can immediately snap back. You know that in this position, you've given away your queen. You either need to win the game or at least win back some major amount of material. And that's exactly what you do with bishop to b4. Um, hitting the king, the only way to stop this check is by giving back the queen. And after we have this takes takes of the bishop, you're actually up um, a full piece. Because if you remember, you started by taking... Um, a free knight, and after that you just traded off uh, a pair of queens and a pair of bishops. So a very nice trap. Before I end the video, I definitely want to encourage you guys to put down below any suggestions or comments that you have about the series. This is a new series, and although the concept itself of spreading these beauties of chess I think is a very cool idea, 
there's definitely things that I can tweak and finalize to make this as perfect as it can be. So definitely down below, um, leave what you think about um, the series when it comes to the things that we send each other in the packages, when it comes to the format of the series, whatever you guys think, leave it down below. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you guys subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.